Okay, let's do a quick summary of Egypt and chapter three in Gardner's Art Through the Ages. We wanna remember that Egypt and its success depends greatly on the Nile and the flooding of the Nile because there's not very much rain in Egypt. And so we do see a period of time where they have a decline because the Nile doesn't flood. We also wanna remember that they are close to stone. So we see lots of pyramids in, in the old kingdom. Um, that are made for the Pharaoh, and these are built as kind of a resurrection machine um, so that the Pharaoh and anyone who helps him build these pyramids um, makes it, um, goes with him to eternity and into the other world after death. Um, the thing that we see in the Middle Kingdom are rock cut tombs. Um, this is like the Temple of uh, Hatshepsut. Um, built into the side of cliffs. The New Kingdom brings some really different changes, uh, departure from the canon. Um, you can also call this the Amarna period. We do see some colossal statuary. We see, see temples to gods and pharaohs. And then we also see Akhenaten and Nefertiti. So this is a super famous couple. Um, love notes are um, found um, that were written by Akhenaten between him and his um, primary wife. Um, we see a huge deviation from the canon, which is the, the very strict structure that we see in um, the statuary of the pharaohs, um, not made after a specific person, but having these perfect ideal proportions that the Egyptians saw fit. So some other, other famous things that we see are King Tut's tomb. He's a minor king, a minor pharaoh, only rules for 10 years and dies at the age of 18 even but his tomb is found intact, and so this makes him uber famous. So other themes that we are going to explore, a lot of themes revolving around death. Um, so the Ka, the corpse, is mummified. It's the first time in a society that we have seen this. Um, typically, corpses were buried with their body intact, or they were cremated, like we saw in Stonehenge. Um, bodies were cremated there. So the treatment over these bodies is extremely important. Um, we see some things revolving around gender. Um, Queen Hatshepsut um, portrays herself as a pharaoh, as a male, so this is unusual. Like we mentioned earlier, the artistic style doesn't change a lot. The canon um, stays tried and true. We, we do have large, um, huge scale um, artworks, architecture, and sculpture. Patronage, um, so this is something new. We have a society that is stable enough um, to make artwork. And so we see the Pharaoh and the wealthy royal families making that possible. We see scores of gods and we see them shown in hieroglyphics and in artwork. And we see lots of gifts and food and things given to appease um, these gods. Um, this culture, besides the Amarna period, which is only about 20 years of deviation, it is unified, it is consistent. We're going to see this deviate when we get to Greece, but we are going to take a look at how this particular canon serves Egypt well to keep their statuary and their structures alive for eternity.